say Elia. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm meeting you here in the Sound and Silence Festival yeah. mm -hmm. and it's amazing. It First time. It is amazing. Hanging out in the same places in Israel. Belonging to the same circles. <laughs> the same hippie circles. meeting you here in Corfu. Yeah, and not even knowing that you live in Israel and then suddenly hearing. Yeah, you ask me if I speak Hebrew. It's like, oh, you speak Hebrew? Yeah, no, suddenly you speak Hebrew. I'm like, you speak Hebrew? I mean, okay, you live in Israel. <laughs> <laughs> and you are living a roomy life. That's what I'm getting from here. Uh -huh. So I would like to know what is this roomy life. connection roomy and roomy connection. life. Okay. And you also did these beautiful cards. This beautiful view. Maybe I take them out just to show this amazing amazing collection and you can also <laughs> see the oh. and so what how, what how did this roomy connection what is this roomy connection wow um it's a good question it's a question i ask myself often myself um i can just tell that i you know i love roomy for many many years i think like many people do and um, at some point, well, actually, in my performance, Come Whoever You Are, I tell the story of how I met Rumi the first time ah. in India in her book that I kind of pulled out of, you know, a, but we a didn't hear of books. It. I missed it. <laughs> so you'll have to shortly tell us. Shortly tell it? Okay, very short, because I want you to come see the performance. But uh, basically, I was traveling in India for the first time, you know, first time in India. And um, I was on my last day of a three month uh, journey. And I was, uh, you know, doing shopping before going home. And I was in a book market and just sifting through, you know, piles of books about spirituality and Hinduism, Buddhism, etc. And I suddenly pulled out this small little thing, green book, Impression. that was called Crazy As You Are. Crazy As You Are. And it was poems by Jalaluddin Rumi, whom I actually had never really... I mean, maybe I heard of him or I had some vague idea, but I didn't really know him. And I opened the book, and the first poem on the first page was, Come whoever you are. Come, please come again. Even if you've promised a thousand times and a thousand come, times. Come wherever you are. Yeah. Wanderer, worshiper, lover of living. Come, come wherever you are. This isn't a caravan of this. I mean, that, that song, I think, that poem, it just says everything. I think it speaks to our deepest longing to just know that we can come again and again and again. It doesn't matter who we are and how many mistakes we've made. And, you know, it's just mm. this, this complete, total, um, full, 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 full embracing of everything we are and acceptance and forgiveness and love. And anyhow, I read that. I, I opened the book and I read that first poem and... And it was like, <gasps> you know, this kind of feeling. <gasps> and then I uh, turned the book over and I saw it and it says, <laughs> which is a huge price for a uh, little book, book in India 20 something years ago. <laughs> I don't uh. know what's happening now, but yeah, I mean, you know, thick books like this, Raga Vashishta, like Tibetan Book of Living and Dying, you know, 50 rupees, exactly. 90 rupees, 590 rupees, my God. Anyhow, so, you know, I'm Israeli. <laughs> you bought it for 100 in the end? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, you know, I started bargaining, you know, nobody's gonna, you know, yeah, 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 make working. me into a sucker. <laughs> and I was like, bookseller, you give me good price, this very big price. And the bookseller is like, no, no, not possible, madam. And then uh, I put down the book, you know, I'm not gonna buy a book for that price. And I went over to the next stall, and I was just, I remember, I really remember that feeling of kind of sifting through books and looking, you know, this god and that goddess and Hinduism and Buddhism and yoga and meditation. And just feeling that call, come, come, come wherever you are. So I went back and I paid 590 rupees. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so that was my first encounter with Rumi. And, um, 
And afterwards, it was just you know a slow building of, of kind of. A so deepening. there was not like a moment that it, it was like a conscious decision that that is where I'm going. That is where I want to put my life and my energy no. and my attention to. It was no. just like natural, organic cause of events. You could say, but there was a moment that there was that moment in which something sparked. Mm -hmm. You know. And what of, was that moment? That was, moment was in that store? That moment was later? when no, that moment was when I opened the book and I read Come Whoever You Are. Mm. It sort of felt like, you know, Rumi is speaking to me. Or or God is speaking to me. I have another question. Yeah. I've heard that you somehow managed to memorize the whole books. How is this happening? <laughs> Tell I, me the secret. I mean many people many people ask me that question. First of all, I don't I don't know all of Rumi's poems by heart, far from it. <laughs> but I do I, I do memorize very easily and I mean many people ask me that question. I don't think it's such a big mystery. I mean it's sort of like, you know, I have the same question about people who play guitar very well. Like, how do you do it? You know, how do you manage to change the chords so quickly? So it's, basically, it's, your material is words, and that's yeah. how. Yeah, my material is words, and I actually, I find it really, I mean, I love memorizing poems. I love, or I even don't memorize, I mean, I do memorize them, but it's sort of like, it's kind of like bringing the poems inside to my body. Mm. And really seeing the poems and feeling them, and and letting their wow. energy become part of me. And then it comes really easily, actually. Bringing the poems into the body. Something like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah something I like that. I think it's kind of a new concept for me. Really? I never heard mm. something like that before. Mm. To bring the word, and so the word becomes part of your body. Yeah, or part wow. of my being. Part of, you know, it, it's kind of the word becomes alive. But I think it's the same for any artist. I mean, I think any musician or, you know, dancer would kind of maybe use their own material but yeah use similar kind of maybe not exactly the same way I put it but it's it's kind mm. of a similar sort of um, okay yeah. I have another question coming from this question because we are here in the festival in this yeah. beautiful 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 as you can see location and um, you are representing Rumi poems and yeah and I hear uh, people saying about you, ah, this roomy woman. Really? That w and so I thought about that. And how is this, where is the border between you and Rumi? Oh, such a good question. Wow, 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 wow. Me and Rumi, we have a very, we have a long relationship, which has had its ups and downs. <laughs> <laughs> like any love relationship? Like any love relationship. And um, I think I used to be, like when I started working on the performance, Come Whoever You Are, I, I, I was very, I was so passionate, I, it felt like I was burning, it felt like, and I was so attached and so identified with, with Rumi and with the whole, everything, you know, everything he writes about, everything he, he it's not, he doesn't write, he actually just brings this kind of energy through so words. words, yeah, and I, I was just, I felt so, so, so identified with, with, yeah, with him, really with him, and, um, and then we had some kind of, actually we had some kind of breakdown, <laughs> some kind of crisis in the relationship. It happened, um, I mean it happened gradually, but I think, I think it has to happen in any relationship basically. Mm -hmm. You know, also when it's between um, human beings. When you kind of understand that the, the, the person or the thing or the idea cannot be everything. It's impossible. It's like nothing can be everything. And nothing can be um, nothing can be held onto as this is it. this is it yeah and because um, when we do that then we kind of we suffocate the living energy inside whatever it is and in a way I was doing that with my relationship to women you know I was so identified so in love so attached so Any, any conversation yeah. I was having with anybody, you know, I, you know, Rumi said, Rumi said, Rumi, and yeah, and gradually I sort of started feeling something was changing, and I couldn't even explain what it was, but I felt that, you know, every time I started to speak Rumi, I, I sort of started feeling this kind of uncomfortable feeling, sort of something like, you know, a voice in me going, or a voice deep inside going, hey, Elia, watch out, you know, watch out, you know, just notice what you're doing, 
but mm. I was sort of ignoring it. And, you know, w it was gradual. And I think something like also in relationships, when you feel that maybe a person is becoming, you know, your partner, Far your beloved life. is kind of becoming farther away from you, you get, you know, you get panicky, you don't want to lose him. And yeah, it was sort of like I didn't want to lose this, this beautiful connection I had. And, and then, um, but it just, it was happening, you know, I couldn't ignore it. And then what happened actually is that um, I organized this huge, beautiful event for Rumi's wedding night, which is the 17th of December. It's a very um, uh, special night in Sufi circles called the Ulf. Mm -hmm. uh, the great wedding night. It's when he died, actually. Mm -hmm. He was united with the beloved. And I organized with Nathanael and with another person we were working with uh, this huge, very beautiful yeah. event. Nathanael Goldberg, Goldberg is uh, yeah. the musician that performs with Alaya. Yeah, brings, we created it together, this performance. Yeah, brings the musical part. Yeah. Into, into this roomy journey yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and um so yeah we created this big event and you know it was really we we hired this big beautiful place and you know we put so much effort into it and i made myself a beautiful dress white dress you know and and yeah everything was just really and we you know we had many musicians and two dancers and it was just really beautiful kind of beautifully planned and then somehow, when I got up to speak Rumi, and that night, something in the energy just wasn't there. Yeah. The channel closed. The channel somehow closed. It was like, it was sort wow. of like what I said to people afterwards was, it was sort of like I planned this big wedding, and the groom didn't come. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and it was like really, really... Was so like, that was a point of separation, like in internal separation? Yeah, that was a point. I mean, it was really a very, very, very painful. It was sort of like it was a moment in which everything kind of inside of me collapsed, and I, I, so I just, I'm, I mean, I understood that something just couldn't, couldn't go on like I was, you know, used to, and um, yeah, and for quite a while I stopped speaking. It was sort of like I couldn't even bring myself to speak his words. Wow. I couldn't, yeah, it was like it was a real sort of, you oh, know, wow. it was, yeah, it was a real crisis. <laughs> And in that, I sort of started, um, yeah, I sort of started realizing, I mean, it, gradually, 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 it started coming back, you know, the, the love and the, the wish to kind of be connected to him again. But I sort of, it was sort of, I started understanding that it's, it's sort of like, in, it's a bit in a way like Rumi's story with Shams. It's yeah, like, yeah, when yeah. this is story, I just actually read it today. I uh -huh. didn't know this story, but yeah. again, in these beautiful cards, there's a little story of Shams, who basically inspired Rumi to, to become a poet. start yeah. writing. Yeah. yeah, it was actually after Shams disappeared. I mean, in here it's just a few lines. In that mm -hmm. performance, we tell the whole story. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But I sort of started understanding that it's not, I mean, Rumi is, it's sort of like, Rumi is the finger pointing to the moon. You know, a Buddha. <laughs> something like that. But he's, he's not the moon. He's, he's, even though actually in Sufi um, lore or folklore, he's kind of, Shams is the sun and he's the moon. But it's like Rumi and what he brings, the vibration he brings, his poems, his words, they point towards something really, really deep and beautiful and, and deeply true. And, and it's that that I love. It's that that I love. And Rumi is, you know, he, he's a vessel, he's a channel. And, you know, I have deep, Deep, deep love for him for that but it's not like yeah he's my vessel also but it's not like it's not Rumi it's, it's something that Rumi is pointing towards uh, the, the last question maybe uh, that has to do with Rumi because I I could say that I actually recently discovered him really? maybe like five eight years ago oh, okay. and uh, since I discovered him I see him Everywhere. Everywhere, people wow. quoting and singing in the singing mm. circles, and every country I go, it's like I see Rumi books. So, on the on the other hand, like I'm a student uh, and I'm getting literature degree, and oh, really? okay. and uh, I've read literature from all around the world for many years, and there are so many poets that are bringing this message of eternity. Yeah. So. My question, why Rumi? Why he's number one in today's uh, 
new age scene yeah. why uh yeah i would say i would put it that way why he's number one in the new age scene yeah good question i don't know <laughs> but i mean i really don't know because there are other great ones there really are. exactly and yeah. it's like he is amazing but still but still yeah i was actually speaking to somebody i think it was uh yeah i think it was to Miriam, the Patrick, the sound engineer's wife, I think it was her, not 100%, but we were speaking about other modern poets that are yeah. kind of like, like him. Oh no, it wasn't her, it was somebody else. Um, but yeah. mocking, it's a lot of people that are mocking yeah. him and trying to bring his style, yeah, but yeah. he's, he is the yeah. one. Yeah, it's a good, really good question. I don't know, I mean, for some reason he was chosen in a way as a divine messenger um, I mean of course he's beautiful he's amazing there's something also about the Sufi that the fact that he comes from the Sufi tradition which is so steeped with uh, with love and deep deep the, the spirit of deep deep friendship and, mm. uh, and, and warmth of the human heart you know which I think really really speaks very very deeply to people but again who knows it's sort of like you know Never know. You know, why, yeah, why Rumi, why, why Muhammad, why Abraham, why... Okay, okay, I yeah. have a last one, I have another yeah, okay, last okay. one. <laughs> so who is a liar then? Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> Without Rumi. That's a question I asked myself, actually, you know. That was in my breakdown, in my crisis with Rumi. It was sort of like, I have to find out who is a liar without Rumi. But yeah, who am I, you know? I mean, Rumi in one of his poems, he asks, who are we, who am I in the midst of this complicated world tangle that is just one single line at the start of Allah? <laughs> so who am I? That's a question, I, you know, I'm just asking all the time. No answer, yeah. Thank you, that's a real answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, wow, this was fun. <laughs> And again, I want to show this beautiful creation that you made to share in the world that makes Rumi very approachable, very easy, and you can find them here, is the information. So, whoever looks at it, listens to it, enjoy, and we love you! We love you!